kingpin Terry Anderson is behind bars tonight. Law authorities arrested him along with Alan Green. The two are being charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. The 24th Street of Morgan reports tonight on his arrest. Police say is putting a major dent in drug operations here in Macon. The members of the Macon Police Department. Police Chief Jim Brooks says Jerry Anderson is the head of one of the biggest, if not the biggest, drug operations here in Macon. He says his arrest is a major success in halting the sale of crack cocaine. I think it's going to do uh, a substantial amount to see uh, to see Mr. Anderson walking around uh, handcuffed. I think that his presence. Uh, is felt continually throughout all areas of our city and our county. Jerry Anderson has been quite successful in eluding the law in the past. Chief Brooks says it was only with some very good information that authorities were able to make the arrest, and a raid on a Kent Drive address uncovered as yet an undetermined amount of cocaine. Members of the Macon Police Department, in conjunction with the FBI, the IRS, ATF, and the Big County Sheriff's Office, uh, took Mr. Anderson down and found in his possession a quantity of cocaine. At this time, that amount of cocaine is unknown because it has not been processed through the uh, crime lab. Gary Anderson and Alan Green are both being charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Chief Brooks says the investigation is continuing to make sure enough evidence and charges are brought against him to keep them behind bars for a very long time.
for one man to pray over him, to hold me in prayer for 28 years, just to make sure I'm gonna get myself all the way right. Then I started arguing with God. I'm here too long, Lord, what's wrong? You got everybody come home and say, me. Why am I still here? Why does everybody keep coming to me? What you want me to do? Just tell me what you want me to do. I just want to go home. He said, okay, it's time for you to go home. Okay, I said, I try. So I get it out, I put it out, I put it out of um, clemency paperwork. Got all about it. I ain't thinking about it no more. I know I ain't gonna get it. Next thing I know about it, eight months later, my counselor comes. She says, Jerry, you know you've been granted clemency. Yeah. So they come and tell me, from the President Barack Obama was going to speak to He said, Look, I must have done it. The whole, everybody making it. He's telling all the prosecutors, the judges, don't nobody want to let you go. He's with me. I believe in second chance. He said, man, look, I'm gonna give you a second chance. He said, whatever you do, don't let me die, because these people say you a bad man. They don't want you to never go back to the street, but I gotta give you a second chance. I said, look, man, I'm gonna never let you die. I promise you that I'm gonna let you die. So I knew it, I knew then my call was to get out and bring all the young kids that going through all the trouble that I've been through, that getting them on the hard time, that fight and the game, you know, and I told everybody. Well, I talked to them. A lot of them got back on the right track. A lot of them still struggling. But it's my joy to keep talking to whoever and anybody I can to try to steer them to go the right way. Because I don't know what's supposed to be able to see them talking to y'all right now. But on him, I started noticing that. You can always know when God can start touching you. You can feel it. You know. And I started feeling the stuff that he's doing to me. Because he started coming. He started putting it right before my eyes. And I, I know they know about what you do. Know what you want me to do? Once you let me go home, I'm gonna do what you ask me to do. So my job is to talk to young kids and they try to steer them in the right direction. Oh my God! And what I do, I talk to the kids and try to steer them going the wrong way. But they on that iron that steel for 28 years. That's a bad feeling. You don't want that. But if they fight in jail, they kill each other. If your kid go to the wrong place, somebody gonna kill him and somebody gonna rape him. Got it, I got it. My job is to try to steal and get, make sure they don't go in there to go to there because you got to get a life down and get a prison. Because you don't know. You got some people that walk up with you ain't never seen before in their life. And it's called, you got to say, I need to see you. I want to fight you. I ain't never seen you before in my life. But I just don't like you. And you got to fight because other people watching. You got to all prison for hard. But you just got to hold on. And you got to get your kids. I know a lot of them will listen to you, but you can give them to me. I know every game they're going to try to play, every game. I know who I have to talk to, I know who's going to go, and I know who ain't going to go. Some of them have to go, I don't want to say that, but some guys, some kids have to go to jail like I did. And then I realized, that's how you know you need to change your life. So I appreciate y'all for listening to me, and I guess I got a play coming out. October 18th, 19th. It's not, it's not glory. It's not glory. Mine is a mess. I always want to young kids and people that I know. When I'm making all this money, I thought it was all right, but it's never all right. Because in the end, they're going to get you. They're going to get you. I think I can always do. And you go to jail for a long time. I don't never want to go down that road again. So that's why I say my job is to teach them. Bring the kids, come see the play. And I appreciate y'all for listening to me. Anybody need to talk to me? Yeah, I'll talk to you, no problem. Thank y'all very much.